One of the most popular real world architecture pattern is using a load balancer along with a custom domain URL and HTTPS or SSL for your application. In this video, we are going to go over the design as well as a hands-on demo. All right, let's get started. Let's first look at the load balancer flow. So in this case, either a user or another application is invoking the load balancer using the default load balancer URL provided and then the load balancer is accepting traffic in HTTP protocol port 80, and then it redirects the traffic back to the application. In this case, let's say your application is running on Kubernetes. Now extending one step further, so you want to invoke your application using a custom domain name, uh, such as your website name, instead of the default load balancer URL. So in this case, you need a DNS resolver in between. So Amazon Route 53 is the service for AWS. So you can register your domain and you can invoke the app using HTTP colon slash slash, let's say myapp.com. So this myapp.com is registered in Amazon Route 53, but the same flow will work for any external DNS registrar as well. In Route 53, you will have a DNS A record pointing to the load balancer and this load balancer will be accepting traffic for HTTP protocol port 80 and then it will redirect it to the backend application. Now going one step further for load balancer custom domain SSL flow, uh, the requester will still invoke it via domain but in this case instead of HTTP they will invoke using HTTPS. Nothing changes in root 53 the DNS A record still points to the ELB, but in this case, the load balancer accepts the traffic for protocol HTTPS and port 443. So to accept traffic in HTTPS protocol, you need to have a SSL cert for your domain. So load balancer can integrate directly with AWS Certificate Manager or SEM, and you need to provision a certificate for this domain name myapp.com. But what if someone invokes this website using HTTP colon slash slash myapp.com and not HTTPS? That's okay as well. In that case, the traffic will come to HTTP port 80 in Load Balancer listener, but you need to redirect the traffic back to port 443 so that the traffic converts to HTTPS and it utilizes the SSL cert. All right, so that's the design flow. Now let's jump into AWS console and do this hands-on. For this demo, I'm just running a sample Apache web server in AC2. Uh, so I spun up AC2 and then I connect from the AWS console. And once I am there, uh, I ran uh, sudo yum install dash y httpd. And then I started the httpd server. And then what I did was I went to var slash www slash html and then I put a, a index.html. Here you can put any index.html. So I'm going to change this a little bit. Just going to put hello from cloud with Raj and then save this file. Uh, so basically at this point, uh, if I copy this public IP address, uh, open a new tab, paste this, uh, it says, welcome to my website. Hello from cloud with Raj. Uh, all right, so now what I'm going to do is create a application load balancer and uh, point the load balancer to this uh, EC2. Okay, I'm in the load balancer screen, click create load balancer and then application load balancer, click create load balancer name. I'm going to give the name web server test, internet facing, select all the subnets on the VPC, uh, security group, so in the security group, actually create a new security group. Uh, name this as LB security group VPC. Uh, so currently the security group has no inbound rules. So I'm going to add some rules. So I'm going to allow HTTP traffic and also going to allow HTTPS traffic. All right, click create security group description. Web server security group, create security group. Okay, go here, refresh this. I'm going to select this uh, ALB security group, remove the default one. And now the listener is where the magic happens. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is protocol HTTP port 80, 
and then I need to create a target group with that EC2 instance. So I'm going to click create target group, uh, select instances, scroll down, target group name, put web server test, health checks, should be slash index.html, click next, uh, select the sample web server, include as pending below, click create target group. Go back to the load balancer, uh, refresh the target group, web server test, there we go. Scroll down, click create load balancer, click view load balancer. So on the listener, we have uh, port 80, HTTP, and then we forwarding to web server test, uh, select this, so it take, takes a minute or two for it to be healthy, so it's running the health test right now. All right, so our health check has passed. Uh, so at this point, uh, the load balancer should be up and running. Uh, so let's go back to our load balancer, web server test, click description. So the DNS name is the system provided URL for the load balancer. So if I open up a tab, paste the DNS name. All right, so now it's going to uh, our website. All right, so at this point, this part is done. And uh, now we are going to do load balancer custom domain flow. So for this, I have a registered domain, uh, testipaddress.com, uh, and then I, you can click this. So remember this name servers, or take note of this in a notepad, and then open the hosted zones. And under hosted zone, the same domain should be there, and click that domain. And you should see these two uh, record, the name server and then SOA. And look at these uh, entries for this name server record. This entry should exactly match the one under registered domain. Uh, if it doesn't match, then uh, root 53 is not going to work. And in that case, you can click this add or edit name server and then copy these values from uh, hosted zone and then match it, I mean paste it here. Uh, but by default, everything should be good. You should only face this error uh, when you delete the hosted zone uh, and you recreate this or something, uh, you don't click something, like confirm something, then you might get this error. Anyway, uh, by default, everything should be good. Uh, then click create record. And don't worry about the CNAME thing yet. Uh, this got created because of certificate. I'm gonna go over it in a second. You don't need the CNAME entry uh, for this demo to work. Uh, so click create record, simple routing, click next, click define simple record, and then under drop down, select application and classic load balancer, select your region, in our case we are US OS 2, and then select the load balancer. And then click define simple record, click create records. All right, so at this point, uh, any traffic that's coming to test IP address dot com uh, should be diverted to the load balancer and that load balancer should send the traffic to our Apache web server. So let's open another tab and then we are going to put test IP address dot com. All right, so this one is working as well and as you can see, this is not secure. Uh, all right, so now we are going to create a certificate uh, and then create the HTTPS. So I'm going to go to Certificate Manager and then request a certificate, request a public certificate and then fully qualified domain name. So I'll give the domain name testipaddress.com, uh, DNS validation, click requests. So you can see for testipaddress.com, status is pending validation. Uh, so since we chose the DNS validation, click that, go here, and then select create records in root 53. So this will put an entry in there. This validates that we actually own this uh, URL or the domain so that we are not trying to add something to someone else's website. Click create records. And then if we go to root 53, refresh this. Okay, you see a CNAME record uh, for the validation. Uh, note that this CNAME record is just for validation. It doesn't do anything on the traffic flow. Alternatively, uh, you can also do email validation. Uh, so don't think that this CNAME entry is doing something to the traffic flow. 
All right, after we added those records, so our certificate is issued. Uh, so if we go back to root 53, we don't need to change anything. We can keep this CNAME as is. Uh, so we have to go to uh, load balancer. So in load balancer under listeners, now we have to add HTTPS. So I'm going to click um, add listener and then select HTTPS. Action should be forward uh, to the same target group, web server test, okay. And then we have to select a SSL certificate uh, for HTTPS. So select the certificate testipaddress.com, click add view listeners. So at this point, uh, we should be able to handle HTTPS traffic. So I'm going to create another tab. And now I'm going to give HTTPS colon slash slash testipaddress.com. All right, so test IP address is also working and you can see this lock symbol. Uh, that means our uh, website is HTTPS. Uh, but if we go back to HTTP colon slash slash test IP address dot com, see this one still works and we don't want that. Uh, so in that case, what we need to do is go back to um, our load balancer and for HTTP 80, uh, click view edit rules click edit up top, click edit here, and uh, delete this rule, click add action and redirect to HTTPS 443. So basically, even if the traffic comes to port 80, HTTP protocol, we're gonna redirect it for HTTPS protocol. Uh, click update, all right, go back to rules. Okay, so for HTTP 80, we are redirecting it to HTTPS, HTTPS all set. So let's go back here, test IP address. Uh, let's refresh this. All right, so even if we refreshed HTTP, you could see it redirected me to HTTPS and you could tell it by this lock symbol. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, so if I put www.testipaddress.com, so this is not going to work because uh, in our root 53, we only created a record for test IP address.com. If we want www uh, to go to the same uh, destination as test IP address, you need to create another A record with dub dub dub. So let me show you that. Uh, so click create record, simple routing, define simple record. And here you need to put www and then here select uh, application load balancer region US West 2. The same load balancer, define simple record, create records. All right, so now we have two A record. One is for just testipaddress.com and another is for www. Uh, so now if we uh, type in www.testip address.com okay so now it works right um, because now dub 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 is also handled uh, so this is like a little bit of trick uh, so what if you want to do instead of www you want to do alb.testipaddress.com right so similarly you can create record click next define simple record and then alb uh, select the load balancer choose your region Choose load balancer, define simple record, create records. So now if we type alb.testipaddress.com, okay, so now our website works, but it says not secure. Why, why is this not secure? alb.testipaddress doesn't work because our certificate only covers testipaddress.com or www.testipaddress.com. Uh, it doesn't cover anything else, so if you want alb.testipaddress.com to be HTTPS, you either need to create another certificate for alb.testipaddress.com or you can create a generic certificate with asterisk.testipaddress.com. Uh, but sometimes it is not recommended uh, so that uh, you can actually specify what exact uh, prefix you can use with your website. All right, folks, uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button. Only 15% of my viewers are subscribed. 
Uh, so help me out here, click the subscribe, click the like button, uh, comment something on the video. It really helps the yeah, YouTube algorithm to grow my channel. Also, all my highest rated and best selling courses uh, are on discount uh, this week. I'll give the link down, so check it out if you're interested. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.